listening to KFWB News Talk 980. My name is Les Brown. This is Mamie Brown's baby boy. And we thank you so much for joining us today and, and be a part of our afternoon drive home or if you're at work or at home already or wherever you might be. It's so great to be with you and I hope that you had a great weekend. You know, it, it, it is a beautiful day outside today and and I, I was thinking as I was just talking with our producer about something today that we could talk to you about. This program, by the way, is, is one that is designed to discuss a variety of things and we love to hear stories from you about the topics that we talk about. And this is a different kind of program. It's positive. It's, it's not one that will focus on the problems of the world. We talk about challenges and how you can overcome them and resolve them and deal with them and move on. But most importantly, it's something that's designed deliberately to make you feel good and laugh and enjoy yourself. It just let some of the things go that's been stressing you out. Forget some of the drama in your life by distracting your mind and taking it to a different place. Now, I want to talk to you today about mistakes. None of us like to make mistakes. I want you to think about it. All of us make mistakes. And that's how we learn about ourselves. We move on and hope not to make the same mistakes again. But people who consider themselves perfectionists, it's a different story. Research is called per perfectionism, a phobia of mistake making. It's the feeling that if I make a mistake, it, it will be catastrophic. You know people like that? Psychiatrists call this maladaptive perfectionism. People need to be the best at everything because if they make a mistake, it's not just about how they perceive themselves, but how others perceive them. They believe they will lose the respect of friends and colleagues if they fail. They have to hit all their marks. And, and these types of folks, they believe they're right and the rest of the world is wrong. They sabotage their own success. They follow rules so tight that they are uncreative. Creativity means making mistakes. Instead of learning from mistakes, they hide them, keeping them from getting feedback. Psychology. These mistakes cause intense agony for them. That's what psychologists, psychology today said. There's a new book out now, and this book is called Better by Mistake, The Unexpected Benefits of Being Wrong. And I must tell you, my life is filled with mistakes. I, I, I live by this axiom. Anything that's worth doing is worth doing badly. Absolutely. Now, it's worth doing right if you know how to do it, but if you don't know how to do it, it's worth doing badly until you get it right. And because I live that way, I've made a whole lot of mistakes. I've made mistakes on people, the judgment calls, things I, I should not have done. I remember when I purchased my first home for my mother and the, during the negotiations, my attorney asked the question, have you had a title search? And I said, what's a title search? And she said to see if there's any liens against the property. And I said, no. And so the guy that I was purchasing the home from, he said, look, he jumped up. He said, the only reason I'm selling you this home is because I admire the fact that you are adopted and you want to buy your mother a home. He said, I don't have time for a title search. I don't have any liens against his property. And he said, and I've got to go back to Philadelphia. And my attorney said, Mr. Brown, I said, yes. She said, listen to me. I'm not questioning this man's honesty, but this is business. Do not sign this contract. Do not pay this money unless you first do a title search. And I looked at him and I looked him in his eyes. And I was raised during a time that they used to say, a person cannot look you in the eyes and tell you a lie. Well, whoever told that, they told a lie. <laughs> People can look you in your eye, can look you in your mouth. They can look you in anywhere and lie to you. I looked at him and I said, do you have any liens against this property? And he said, no. And I looked at my attorney and I said, I believe him. And she said, it's your call, but you're making a serious mistake. And she was right. That was a mistake. There was a lien that I found out 30 days later. The guy had a $50,000 lien against that property. 
This is a dream home. This is the fulfillment of a dream of buying a house for my mother that I promised her at 10 years old. I am so appreciative of you. You are adopting us. I'm going to take care of you. And as a result of that mistake, we had to move. As a result of that mistake, I had to move my mother out of that home that I'd purchased for her and had to take her back to the roach-infested home in Liberty City, a poor section of Miami, Florida, that I had moved her from. It was one of the most devastating times of my life. I learned something from that. Have you ever made any mistakes in life that you, you learned from? I learned something from that. Yes, I did. That's what we're talking about. What are some of the mistakes? I'm going to tell you what we, what I learned from that one when we come back. But I tell you this, it was a, a it was, it introduced me to myself. I, I found out a lot about myself. It was not the end of the world. I, I was angry, but I had to let the anger go so I could think and, and move myself out of the situation. I learned that it doesn't matter what happens to you. What matters most is what happens in you. And I decided, forgetting those things which are behind, I decided to put together enough workshops and seminars, and, and I became very creative. And within three to four months, I was able to purchase her another home. But I had to let that go because it was killing me. That anger was eating me up. And I know had I found that guy, I would be in jail right now. I would not be on this microphone. I found something out about myself and about life. And that nothing is really, as has been says, nothing is neither good nor bad, but thinking makes it so. That's that's what Shakespeare said. And And I had to back off that. I had to really put that in perspective. I had to get my head together. I had to deal with that. What is the lesson less that you need to learn from that? Because I was, I was trusting, I believed him. I just couldn't imagine that he would screw me like that. And yes, he did. He has no foreplay or nothing. Anyhow, I want you to call. The number to call, I like to hear any mistake that you've ever made that you learned something from that. You learned something about life. You learned something about you. It introduced you to a part of yourself that you didn't know. Maybe it was a career choice. Maybe you made a mistake about a relationship. Oh, I've done my share of that. And you knew, you knew at the time that you said yes. You knew it was a mistake, but you just wouldn't honor yourself because of the pressure of the situation you gave in you surrendered i i did a surprise engagement party for my oldest daughter i will not tell you her name is ona and 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 so i set it up i i was collaborating with her guy who wanted to be a fiance and i did a video and everything and at the end of it he proposed to her and got down on her knees and his knees and gave her a ring and she accepted it. Then she called me after everybody left. She said, you know, you have lost your mind. <laughs> you got to let a sister know I'm not going to marry this guy. Oh, my God. Oh, boy. She said, Daddy, you're making a mistake. My name is Les Brown. I'm Mrs. Mamie Brown's baby boy. I want to hear from you. I want you to call me right now.